Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to today's licensing hearing. Uh, it's Wednesday, the 17th of March, 2021. Um, we'll start off the agenda with part A, um, and I'll do introductions first. Uh, my name is Councillor Madassa Dean, and I'm the chair for today's hearing. Um, I'm joined by my fellow councillors, uh, Councillor Newell and Councillor Flitcroft. Um, welcome to you. Uh, Officers wise from the local authority, we have um, representing the licensing team today, Mrs. Pritchard, um, and also Mrs. Raby, who's the legal representation today to give us any advice that we might need uh, during today's meeting and, and today's procedure. Uh, from committee admin, we have Mr. Mulholland, um, and from trading standards, we have uh, Mr. Kelly and uh, Ms. Um, Greenwood. Um, and from JTI, uh, we have uh, Mr. Howell, um, who's represented today. Uh, the licensee holder um, is with us, Ms. Bogdan, and her representative today, her legal uh, support, is uh, Mr. Puder, um, who, who's joining us. And um, also the live transmission uh, today, we have the support of uh, John McMurray. So thank you, thank you for that. Uh, so we'll move over to agenda item two, which is a declaration of interest. Uh, do we have any declarations from councillors? No, Chair. Thank you. Thanks for that. Uh, so I'll just briefly go through the procedure of the meeting um, so everyone's aware of what's going to happen. Um, over over the uh, the period of this meeting, so we'll we'll first go over to the licensing officers, uh, who have given us um, sort of sent us a bundle of information that we've all had an opportunity to to look at um, everybody included in today's meeting. So um, we'll have an opportunity to ask them if there's any additional information to go with the bundle, and then we'll have questions first from councillors. Um, then from other parties and all including uh, the licensee holder and uh, their representative. Um, once we've done that, we'll go over to trading standards and um, get their version of events. Uh, once we've heard them, then we'll have an opportunity to ask them questions. Again, all of us. Um, then we'll go over to uh, Mr. Hal from JTI, who will put his uh, representation forward followed by questions uh, um, again, and then we'll move over to the licensee holder, um, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Bogdan and uh, Mr. Puder, her legal representative. Uh, once we've heard from them, we'll have an opportunity to ask them uh, questions um, du during, uh, during that part of the meeting. Um, it's a discussion led um, meeting, which I'll be um, I'll, I'll be leading. Uh, once um, we're at that stage, will everyone will get an opportunity to summarise briefly on um, on the case, and then we'll retire. You'll be leaving the meeting then, other than the councillors and the um, borough um, solicitors team support. So uh, and then we'll retire to make a decision. Once we've made that decision, um, you'll get that decision in writing within the next five working days. So you won't get the decision today. Um, the decision will be uh, with you in writing over the next five days. So is is everybody clear about that? Mr. Puda uh, and Mrs. Bogdan, are you clear about uh, what the procedure and what I've just been through or do you have any questions? No, Chair, we're clear with that. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for that. Right. Uh, bear with me a moment. Right, OK, so we'll move over to the uh, we've done the procedure. We'll move over to the application itself. So uh, first of all, it's over to Mrs. Pritchard from licensing. Uh, Mrs. Pritchard, we have received uh, the bundle that you've sent us. We've all had a, a good opportunity to look at that. Um, is there anything you'd like to add in addition to um, what's uh, what you've already sent us? Thank you, Chair. Can I can I just double check that you've had the additional information? I think there was um, four lots altogether. 
So there was uh, the information from um, Paris Hayes email. Um, there was some information submitted from Liam Kelly in, re in regards to an update for the complaints. There's yes. some information from Mr. Puder, the solicitor for Miss Bogdan. And then um, late yesterday, there was a further email from Andy Boland with some information and photographs attached. Yep. Yep, I've received those. Can everybody confirm that they've received that information? Yes, I have, Chair. Yes, Thank we you. have also. Yes, we have, yeah. And can Thank I just you. say the fourth paragraph in relation to that um, applies to, to something else. So if you can just ignore the fourth paragraph in the information that came through yesterday from Andy Bolan. That doesn't relate to this premise, but the rest of it does. Yeah. Right. Thank you. The, the, thanks. Uh, do we have any questions for uh, Mrs. Pritchard? No, Mrs. Pritchard, I've, I've got a question for you. Um, just, just something I think it might be a typo error. Um, the on the in the information that we've been sent, it says that the premises uh, they currently have permission um, as a licensing uh, to uh, sell off license uh, alcohol uh, from 6 a.m. to 4 a.m. Um, is that uh, is that an error or is it? Uh, Oh, yeah. just come, I'll, I'll just uh, that, come in then. Um, that is that's, correct. That's the license yeah. they hold for that premises. Yeah, it was. It was. That was what they put um, the license forward for, and it was granted till four a.m. Right. Okay. Okay. That's fine. Um, right. So no, the, no further questions. So we'll, we'll move over to trading standards. Um, so is it Mr. Kelly that's going to make a representation today? Thank you, Chair. Liam Kelly here. There's, there's been quite a bit of information uh, coming through, so I'd just like to, to quickly summarise. Uh, the review was commenced after uh, a, a test purchase uh, in October of the uh, uh, where Amber Leaf uh, uh, tobacco was sold, uh, obtained from outside the store. Uh, it's illegal to sell. Uh, there's a background as well. Uh, to the premises. Uh, Jennifer Bogdan was, was prosecuted for, for uh, being in possession of illicit tobacco in 2016. Um, she pleaded guilty. There was a £1,000 fine and £500 costs. Uh, since then, there have been regular intelligence reports, 10 in fact, uh, alleging illicit tobacco being sold by the shop. Three subsequent visits by trading standards uh, 2017, 18, and in October, just gone. Uh, no illicit tobacco was actually found in the shop. Uh, but during the uh, latest visit in October, uh, 624 nitrous oxide gas canisters were found on the premises and seized, uh, and subsequently voluntarily surrendered by the shop. Uh, there's also the recent photographic evidence that shows used gas canisters and balloons discarded on the streets around the shop. OK, that's that's my summary. Thank you for that, Mr Kelly. Uh, do we have any questions from councillors for Mr Kelly? Any questions from officers? No, I have no questions. Do we have any questions from uh, Mr. Puder or Miss Bogdan? No, we have no questions, Chair. Thank you for that. So we'll move over to um, Mr. Hal from JTI. Mr. Hal, would you like to make your representation now, which will be followed yes. by questions? Um, yes. Um, nothing really to add to the written um, statement I provided and also the information of the test purchase provided by my colleague Phil oh. Charlton. Um, I would just like to tie that in with the previous statement, um, so which suggests there is an ongoing problem with illicit tobacco sales at the store, um, and that's all I would like to point out. Thank you, Mr. Hal. Uh, do we have any questions from councillors? Any questions from officers? Mr. Puder, do you have any questions? No questions, Chair. Thank you. OK, that's great. So uh, 
we'll uh, move over to yourself now, uh, Mr. Pruder and uh, Ms. Bogdan, if you'd like to put your uh, case forward. Yeah, so we trust that everyone in this committee has received the written statements from Jennifer Bogdan, Sylvia and Dia. Has every, can everyone confirm they've re received the statements? Yes. Uh, yes. OK, yeah. so basically on 6 of 8, non-legal tobacco was found on the shop floor at the premises of 248 St. Helens Road, Bolton. Um, the owner of the premises has very stringent policies in selling non-legal tobacco and selling tobacco and alcohol to underage sales um, since her conviction or prosecution in 2016. Yeah? So the premises has previously been visited on a number of occasions. However, the license holder has only been prosecuted in 2016 and no illegal alcohol or tobacco has ever been found in the premises since. Um, the premises has recently gone through a, a big refurbishment. Everything is clean and tidy. Everything is above standard. And the shop is really been trading for many years and is a pillar in the community. Um, now, on the day that the, the, the visit occurred, it was not Jennifer who sold the tobacco, but one of the employees. Um, the perpetrators of the sale of the non-tobacco have been disciplined by Jennifer and Jennifer makes a promise to closely monitor all her staff. Now, if you read the statement of Jennifer, um, <coughs> Jennifer is a European national who has decided to permanently settle in the UK. Um, she's a working mother looking after two young boys. Um, all her business affairs are up to date. Ramiro's mini market is a backbone of the community. The shop has been there for many years. Before, he used to trade as a news agent. Um, I, I'm from the local area. I know the shop. It was a news agent, and then Jennifer acquired it five years ago. Um, it's been established prior to other off license in the area. Um, the only one I can recall is McCall's and Ramiro's. Um, there, ha there are a number of other small off-license tobacco sellers there, um, but they've just appeared in the last couple of years. The sale, in, the sale of alcohol and tobacco is very, very important to, for the business to stay open. Um, during this pandemic, the lockdown, Jennifer herself has delivered um, groceries, you know, cigarettes, tobacco to elderly people, vulnerable people in her own car. So she does what she needs to, to help the community. Um, she also hopes to run the shop for many years to come with the intention to pa pass it on to her children, her family. She's a very hardworking mother um, who's established this current business. Uh, regardless of whether it was one packet or a number of packets, Miss Jennifer fully understands the seriousness of the offence. Um, she's never been in trouble with the law before and appeals for leniency with the decision. Um, Jennifer is willing to work with Bolton Council uh, in any way she can. She will closely work with Bolton Council to prevent crime and disorder, to promote public safety, um, pub also public nuisance, and protection of children against harm. She is a mother, she has two children, um, she, she knows you know, in aspects of children that they must be protected. She has a very stringent policy not to sell alcohol to under 25. She, her, all her shop has been heavily signposted for COVID and the sale of illegal uh, tobacco and alcohol. I asked the committee to consider imposing conditions and, you know, um, she maintains all her records for her alcohol and tobacco with her accountant. Every, all her business affairs are up to date. Um, we, we propose regular checks by council if they wanted to, um, you know, in secrecy or by not telling her that we're coming. Um, she's willing to work. She's basically, she wants to this business to survive and wh whatever it takes, she's willing to do. Um, it's the first time she's actually been put into 
a committee. She's quite nervous. She's, she's embarrassed of what's happened. Um, now, the, 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 the people who sold the tobacco on the day, Sylvia, she has been given a final written warning. Now, she, she's been employed by Jennifer. She's one of the first staff employed by Jennifer. Um, she, again, is an elderly lady with, with family. Um, she pleaded with, pleaded with her not to make her redundant or lose her job. And Jennifer can trust her to run the shop. So she's given her one final chance. Um, the other person involved is Dia. Uh, this is a friend of her partner. Um, she's allowed him to stay on top of the shop in the flat. Um, she has strictly told him not to enter the shop. She, he, he can only enter the shop in her presence. Um, and all we can say is she really apologizes for what's happened. She's embarrassed um, and, you know, she's made steps and she's carried out whatever she needs to do to prevent from this happening again. That's all, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Puda. Uh, OK, um, I'll, I'll ask the first question. Um, you, you mentioned in your statement that um, Mrs. Uh, Ms. Bogdan has never been in trouble before, uh, but we've heard that she was prosecuted in 2016 and fined as well. Can you confirm that? Please? Yeah. Sorry, we, we meant like other criminal. Yeah, we understand she's been prosecuted in 2016 for this similar offence, considering the licensing, but any criminology, you know, she's not had any other criminal offences apart from that offence in 2016. Sorry, Chair. OK, thanks for that confirmation. Um, Councillor Newell. Thank you, Chair. I've got um, a couple of questions. There I am. Um, uh, your client, um, she does fully understand, doesn't she, that she is responsible for her employees' actions? Uh, I mean, that is the case, isn't it? Yes, fully. I mean, she's here. She speaks, she's well spoken in English. Um, she can read and write. Um, she's a Hungarian national. She's been living in the country for over five years. Well, she just pointed out to me 10 years. Um, she's gained her permanent residency. Um, so, yes, yeah, so she, she has she has one full-time staff, which is Sylvia, and she has two part-time staff on the weekend. Um, yeah, and she, she's got she's got 24-hour security cameras there. She also has a cash machine. She's been interested with a cash machine outside the shop, so she she, she must have cameras there. Um, so all all staff adhere to the training given by her, and she she tries to maintain the the staff training as much as she can. Yeah, that wasn't the question I asked, actually. I asked, does she, does she fully understand that she is responsible for any action taken by her yes, staff? Yes, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Yes, it does. Yeah. Um, secondly, um, you spoke about the gentleman that lives in the flat above. Now, in the papers, yes. it says that this gentleman has applied for asylum and failed. So can you tell us what his status is at the moment, please? Yeah, he currently has no status. He's applied for something called further submission, um, just for the committee. Further submission is when you have a failed asylum claim, they're allowed to pursue, so they can either provide new evidence that wasn't provided before, or they can pursue their claim on a different matter. So for example, the time they've lived in the UK, so he has got a pending application, like a further submission with the Home Office. OK, um, moving on to the gas canisters, um, cylinders rather. D does your client have an explanation of the why she uh, stopped these cylinders in such large quantities? Well, I'll, I'll pass it over to Jennifer so you can speak to her directly. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, can you tell us why you stock these uh, gas cylinders in such large quantities, please? The last visit when the council came to the premises was uh, a couple of months ago, when they um, took the 
canisters from it's not like a garage it's like a little space where we stuck the cryptids and stuff and that's why we we've been putting it there because we used to suck it on the shelf but because we heard that um, under 18 children was looking for this stuff and uh, i was asking them when i was working at night why do you looking for that and they were like really sick at him. So I was like, I can't tell that to you because you're all, you're under 18. And then I saw so many canister things on the street. So I put them away. So I was like, okay, I'm going to take them where I bought them or I'm going to just leave them there, but we're not going to sell them. So when the council came and took all these boxes, I told them that I, uh, I didn't know it was illegal and they said it's not even illegal, but I didn't want to sell it because I thought that was dangerous for children. And they were like, okay, that's fine. You just need to, you, you just need to sign the statement that we have been taking it away. Uh, and I was telling them that that's okay. Why did you stop them in such large quantities? Who did you hope to sell them to in such large quantities? It, it wasn't that large quantity. It's like, if we're buying stuff, we're not buying two pieces of them because I don't have time to always go and get stuff. I got two children, one of them go to school, one of them always home with me. So if I go for buying stuff to the shop, then I'm not buying like one piece in everything. I do buy more, so I don't need to go very often. But you had over 600 in the shop. I'm just wondering who you thought you, you, you know, when you, when you buy stocking, I would imagine you buy stock that you know that you're going to sell. You don't buy in, you don't buy in stock that you think you may sell. So, who was your market? Who were they intended for as your market? You know, who did you think would come in and buy I, these I, cylinders? I don't remember exactly where did I get that from, but I do get stuff from uh, Best Farm from uh, uh, what is it called? One second, it's called Booker and stuff like this. It, yeah. I didn't think that that's a harm thing because we we selling uh, stuff to make cakes, and that's one of the things what you can make cake with. So I never thought that's gonna end up with a problem. You know what I mean? And it's a bakery close to us. You know, sometimes they when they go when they did it when they don't have enough milk, they just pop in. Oh, can I have you know a bottle of milk and and there is the money and stuff like this so i never thought that's going to be a problem okay it just seems that cake making is very very popular in bolton at the moment um have you got any um thought of why there were so many discarded cylinders around your premises uh there is a different uh, premises uh, near my shop that's called dino's mini market what it's got a really bad background, like uh, they have selling illegal stuff, but that's nothing to do with me, to be honest. But it's really close to to my shop, and um, you know, people with bad background, they go there, they walk down the street. We got the back street, what is uh, not belongs to us, to be honest, not belongs to us, but it's not really clean. So they just go, come, they throw in the rubbish and stuff. So I, I, I. I can't explain that why it's around my shop, but that's not from us. So the, the rubbish that's outside your shop, the discarded cylinders outside your shop are not from your shop. They're from another shop. Is that what you're saying to us? Sorry, I'll just um, quickly add on that for you or summarise. Yes, just a walking distance, less than a minute away, there, there's another off licence. And the discarded canisters and balloons are found on the main St. Helens Road and in the back street, not in front of the shop. In front of the shop is like a corner. It's like got a gate and there's a traffic light there. So what was happening is if people were purchasing from another shop, walking down towards Ramiro's. And if you take a left, there's a back street and there's a quiet area at the back. And it's all being used and discarded around there. And it feels like Jennifer uh, or Ramiro is, is being penalized for, you know, from other people's sales. OK, all right. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Newell. Um, we'll move over to Councillor Flickcroft, please.
Thank you. Um, I'd just like to ask a question with regards to the staffing of the premises. You state you've got one full time member of staff, which is Sylvia, and two part time members of staff. Can I ask who the part time members of staff are, please? Yeah, just like the part time staff. Oh, one of them is called Jagad Mohammed, and the other one is called Ali Malian. Are they both gentlemen? One gentleman and another is a female. Yeah. Right. That causes me a bit of a problem, really, because I'm just looking on the license details of the license, and it says on it a minimum of two male members of staff will be employed to work on the premises from 12:30, uh, sorry, 11:30 p.m. until close. So. That doesn't comply with the details of the license. Yes, yeah, so she's got she has got a male staff, but he's just training at the moment. So he's there at the premises. Also, she has a partner as well, um, who stands there at the shop as well. He doesn't work there. Um, whenever he's free, he'll go to the shop and stand there. Okay, thank you. Uh, do we have any questions from officers? Yes, sir. This is Liam Kelly from Trading Standards. Uh, yes, Mr. Have Kelly. One question. Um, something doesn't, doesn't seem to tally with with uh, uh, the information. So I've just got one question. Since since the prosecution in two thousand and sixteen. Uh, there, there have been 10 intelligence reports uh, that indicate illicit tobacco may still be being sold. And the, the recent test purchase uh, seems to show that well, they, anyone can just walk in off the street and buy illicit tobacco in the shop. Uh, however, in three visits by trading standards um, since the prosecution, no illicit tobacco has actually been found on the premises. Uh, now you point out that the employee um, actually left the premises to get the illicit tobacco that was sold in the recent purchase. So my, my question is, is the reason that trading standards haven't found illicit tobacco on the premises because it's actually being stored outside the premises? Well, we can assure you, um, from the business point of view, there's nothing actually stored outside the premises. Now, all these phone calls to trading standards um, could simply be the competitors or, or people who don't like Jennifer or the workers there. Um, so we, we can't. You know, the, we, we feel that these calls have been either done by competitors or people who don't like them. And, you know, Sylvia and Dia have been honest, have been open, and they have said, you know, it was her tobacco that she was selling. Now, we can also re relate to Dino's. Um, Dino's has recently been shut or their license has been revoked. I'm, I'm not up to date on what's happened there, but looking on their notice, they, they, the officers there found a set of keys and uh, that set of keys related to uh, a vehicle nearby and when they searched the vehicle there they found cigarettes in the vehicle well you know the, the Ramiro's is on a corner the back street is heavily used by local residents and there's not hardly any cars parked there all the time um, but yeah yeah, Jennifer would also like to say something about this. So uh, there was some complaining uh, about the shop and uh, I know the recent reason for that. Um, I had a phone call from Bolton Council, I think it was last summer, when they said that I need to control around my shop the street because of the, the COVID-19. They said that's my responsibility. I'm not allowed to let groups stay around the shop. And uh, I told them it's really hard to controlling that because it's like teenagers, young persons, 
elder person staying outside drinking alcohol. And when I tell them to move away from the shop or go home, don't stay in a group because that's not safety. They, they, they even saying things like, oh, you're not owning the street. You can't tell me where to stand. Um, the shop is only belongs to, you know, inside from the door. They, they, and when you get an argument because of that, you know, that, that might be a revenge to do some complaining things because it's really hard as a woman to controlling people not staying around the shop. But as Bolton, Bolton Council said to me, that's my responsibility. If I'm not going to do that, then I get a fine. So I don't know what to do about that. Like I'm getting arguments with uh, people around there. So basically, she's in a catch two situation. You know, she has to look after the needs of the business and she has to follow and adhere to the rules set out by the authorities. And when she's doing that, she's getting a lot of trouble by the local residents. And this is where she feels that she's being pushed and complaints are made, uh, well, you know, necessarily untruthful complaints are made to Bolton Council. And she, she feels that her local competitors have a lot of input in that as well. Okay, thank you. Mr. Kelly, Mr. Kelly, would you like to ask any further questions? So, yeah, uh, thank you. I have no further questions. Right, do we have any questions from anybody else? Okay, so we'll move over to the summaries now. So uh, we'll start off with uh, Mrs. Pritchard from the licensing team. Thank you, thank you, Chair. I've, I've nothing really additional to say other than you've heard from um, the trade standards team, JTI and the license holder and her representative today. And in light of what you've heard, you're asked to consider are there any steps necessary to promote the licensing objectives and in particular prevention of crime and disorder and protection of children from harm? and therefore take any of the steps which are outlined in the report at paragraph five. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, Mr Kelly, would you like to summarise? Do you have anything further to add? Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, uh, Home Office guidance uh, uh, indicates when it comes to licensing matters that certain criminal activities should be treated very seriously, uh, and that includes the possession and sale of smuggled tobacco. Um, that, that's all I have to say. Thank you for that. Uh, Mr Hull from uh, JTI, do you have anything to add? Or uh, would you nothing like to, to add. Th no, thank you. Nothing Nothing to add to the points I made earlier. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so, Mr Pudu, it's up to you, over to you now and Ms Bogdan uh, to summarise um, and then we'll retire to make a decision. Thank you, Chair. So, yes, Jennifer realizes the seriousness of this business, uh, of this situation. Um, the shop is a backbone to the community. If the license is revoked or taken away, then the business will suffer. And it's a shame to see the shop close. Um, alcohol and tobacco is very important to the business because it attracts other sales, uh, sweets, groceries, drinks. Um, Again, regardless of one pack or many, Jennifer knows what's happened and she will, she's going to prevent anything like this from happening again. Uh, she, she now, she feels a bit safer with the other supermarkets recently being prosecuted. So, you know, she's willing to work with Bolton Council to make the area cleaner, safer and more public safe. Um, she, she, She's, she's a woman who wants to prevent crime and disorder. Um, she doesn't let people hang around near her shop. She's got cameras outside and inside. She has a cash machine. She's been interested with that. Um, and, you know, she, she's a, a character of good person. Yes, she has been prosecuted in 2016, but that's five years ago. And since then, you know, um, there, there's been visits to the shop and no illegal tobacco has been found. The perpetrators of this sale have basically took responsibility and they have been, as I call, punished by Jennifer. And she's on a final written warning. And if need be, if, if she suspects anything at all, then she'll be dismissed from her 
her position. Um, and just, yeah, we just want to say, please allow Jennifer to continue her local community, providing her local community. As we said, she, she's offered her own delivery service to vulnerable and elderly people. She'll continue doing that. Um, and she'll, you know, make it work for the community. That's all, Chair. Thank you for that. Um, so uh, we've heard from all the different parties that are involved today. And uh, what we'll do now is we'll ask um, you to leave the meeting, the officers and uh, the licensee and their rep, and uh, we'll retire to make a decision. But before we do that, I'd just like to thank everybody uh, for attending today. And as I said, you'll um, we'll make a decision uh, now and you'll get the decision in writing within the next five working days. Um, so uh, if you'd like to leave the meeting now, um, thanks for attending. Thank you all. Just in case, if you'd be available, just in case there were, there were any other questions. But if you could leave, please, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.